did by His Excellency the Deputy Governor, the Chairman of the occasion, our Father, Teacher and Leader, the Grand Imam of Kano, Professor Emeritus, Professor Muhammad Sari Zaharuddin, our Royal Fathers that are ably represented here, the Vice Chancellor of Bayer University Kano, and the Mentor of Mentors, Mentor of Mentors, the former Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Universities Commission, National Universities Commission, the former Vice Chancellor who founded this center, and I believe today he is filled up with happiness that what he established is given out its fruits. Professor Abu Bakr Rashid, the director of the centers, co-speakers, heads of higher institutions, distinguished scholars and professors, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The MC has said that I have been given 15 minutes like my co-speakers. But if you have the program of event, you would see that there would be a keynote speaker. My teacher, Dr. Bashir Ali Umar, would have been the first lead paper presenter, and I'm the second lead paper presenter. In that regard, I could have been the third speaker but I have been hijacked to become the first speaker. And by that token, I deserve some gratification for additional minutes. <laughs> uh, when we look at this topic, we would see that at the end of it all, the expected outcome of this conference is that the conference should be able at the end to prove that Islam is not a religion of violence and that violence is falsely, falsely, you can say also mischievously associated with Islam. I believe this is the sum total of what this conference intends to achieve. And that will be done easily by stating or citing Nusus from the Quran and Sunnah that prove that yes, Islam is a, compa is a religion of compassion, a religion of mercy, and a religion of peace, not a religion of violence. And historical incidents and facts would also be narrated that demonstrate that Islam is certainly not a religion of violence. If this is done, I am sure the conference would have achieved its purpose. But Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, this is a university. This is a university. And this is an academic conference. And therefore, necessarily, there is the need to give an academic touch to the discourse. And since Dr. Bashir Ali Umar who is a scholar I have been listening to since my students' days is going to speak after me. And since our guest from Mali is also an erudite scholar, a leader of African Muslim scholars for that matter, they are all going to speak after me. They are more conversant and more acquainted with the nusus of the Quran and Sunnah than me. And they are also more attuned to the facts of Islamic history than me. I will leave that business to them. 
And therefore, what I will do, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chancellor, is I will try to contextualize the discourse and problematize it. What do I mean by that? Academic discourse needs to be discussed or needs to be situated within a context. And you need, when you want or when you intend to address an issue academically, you have to study the problem. You have to, 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 to state the problem. You have to define the problem. It is when you define the problem that you will get the first of what you intend to discuss. And that, that is what I am going to do humbly. And for that matter, I will seek the permission of the chairman to read my introduction where I tried to problematize the discourse and to situate it within a context. And perhaps if time permits, I will present some statistics and because I have only 15 or 20, 25 minutes or 30, then I will present some things. All over the world, all over the world today, an unpleasant fact stares Muslims in the face. That is the disgustful association of Islam with violence. Rightly or wrongly, therefore, and indeed, by errors of omission and commission, our utterances and actions, unfortunately, sometimes seem to lead credence to this rather obnoxious notion. And by that token, by that token, our tendencies and disposition largely defensive, hence, the usual assertion has always been Islam is a religion of peace. This is defensive. Ironically, however, against the backdrop of this apprehension, at the end of it all, this defensive assertion, Islam is a religion of peace. This defensive assertion is what this conference would attempt to prove or rather confirm. An objective study and analysis of this unworthy situation established the role of both internal and external factors that had lie that lie at the root of its birth and emergence. There are internal factors and there are external factors that are responsible for associating Islam with violence. In the internal dimension, many Muslim communities have been held hostage by various forms and levels of violence occasioned by mutual hostilities and internecine armed conflicts and clashes. The consequences of these clashes are of different magnitudes and proportions. Thousands of lives have been lost and property and all other means of livelihood. What billions of dollars have been destroyed and Take the case of Sudan, the most recent example. Nations and communities in terms of violence was well and very succinctly captured by the Forum for Promoting Peace and Muslim, in Muslim Societies in its uh, uh, brochure in 2014, when it identifies and presents about five different manifestations and magnitudes of violence in Muslim countries as follows. Number one, the uncommon nature of the threats is evidenced by unprecedented levels of violence utilizing every type of warfare. This even includes weapons of mass destruction which citizens of the same country are using against one another. Number two, this violence has a broader reach as evidenced by the expanding geography that covers a large region of the Muslim and Arab nations. Conflicts are on the verge of spreading to other regions as well. This conflict is different in its duration. Perpetual conflicts 
with no end in sight, are becoming the norm in Muslim countries. Perpetual con conflicts with end not in sight are almost becoming the norm in several Muslim countries. Number four, the ideas and psychology associated with this violence are distinct. This dimension augments the three preceding dimensions above, since these conflicts are produced, I mean, the, they have produced the most extreme ideas, the most bizarre fatwas, and the most fanatical and inciting opinions. This discourse has been filled with appalling fatwas, rendering judgments on excommunication, deviance, immorality, and heresy. These fatwas have justified bloodshed while disregarding, irrespective of how morally degraded a society may become. Instead, there are inappropriate claims of engaging in jihad and addressing the ills of society without fulfilling the conditions of doing jihad, which has led to even more suffering in several Muslim countries. Number five, this conflict has an international implication and tarnishes the image of Islam worldwide. Some might even describe our faith as a religion of terrorism, as they do, and work to try Islam and its ad adherents under the Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. There are certain practical examples of these manifestations of the internal factors and occasions or incidents of violence in the Muslim world. On one hand, there are bizarre groups that perpetrate all sorts of atrocities, prosecute unconventional warfare in terroristic forms, purportedly in the name of jihad, ranging from either Al-Qaeda or the likes like ISIS, Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda in the Maghrib, and near us, the Boko Haram. On the other hand, there are numerous internal mutual armed conflicts in the struggle for power and political dominance as is happening, or as it happened in Iraq, and after Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, and other places. Very recently, Libya, Syria, and Yemen, and to some extent even Egypt, are cases in point when you make reference to the so-called Arab Supreme. The external dimension of the factors responsible for the association of violence with Islam and Muslims also have several manifestations. Just as the internal factors have several manifestations, the external factors also have several manifestations. And it is pertinent, it is pertinent to make the point that there are symbiotic and interactive and reactionary links between the external and the internal dimensions of the factors responsible for violence in the Muslim world or associated with Muslims. First, there are cases of violence that are clearly associated. Cases of violence that are clearly associated with perceived injustice against Muslims, as is the case with the Israeli-Palestine conflict. And look at what is happening now. As I'm speaking now, almost about more than 23,000 people have been killed wantonly by Israel in Gaza. More than 10,000 of the people killed are children, and about 7,000 of them are women. And reaction to this in kind of injustice is mischievously, you know, condemned as violence. You can see the entire Western media wouldn't want to, to accept the fact that Hamas is fighting for freedom. They will only make reference to the 7th October, forgetting the over 75 years of massacre and persecution against Palestinians. And even when they try to interview a person on the media, they would only want to start from 7th October. 
and they would say that, wouldn't you call what Hamas did on 7th October an act of terrorism? So these kinds of reactions to injustices meted against Muslims are unfortunately associated as violent, I mean, violence associated with Islam. Then, there are cases of violence that are clearly also, I mean, uh, secondly, there are examples of perceived, examples of perceived double standards. Double standards in tolerating and or even recognizing governments or regimes that were instituted or enthroned through genuine political mandate as defined, ordained, and provided by due democratic electoral processes and procedures, as was the case of the Islamic Salvation Front in Algeria in 1990 or 1991, and even the case of Hamas that was duly elected in Gaza, but the United Nations would not recognize the political leaders that were duly elected through democratic process in Gaza as legitimate leaders because the UN would continue to recognize them and to see them as terrorists. But in East Timor, Christians that struggle for self-determination are freedom fighters. In southern, in South Sudan, Christians that struggle for self-determination are also freedom fighters. And they will be back and supported by the United Nations to get their land, I mean to get self-determination. But the Palestinians would always con continue to be condemned as terrorists, very unfortunately. Now, reactions to this, and also remember the kind of ethnic cleansing that took place in the Balkans and the Caucasus against Muslims. When Muslims stood up, Muslims that stood up to fight for their freedoms in Chechnya, in, in, in Abkhazia, for example, all these are terrorists. There are yet two significant manifestations in the external dimensions of the factors responsible for associated violence with Islam and Muslims. These two factors are Islamophobia on one hand, and Western media reportage and representation of Islam and the so-called conspiracy theory on the other hand. Islamophobia presents itself in many ways, from ill-treatment and molestation of Muslims simply because of their faith or appearances, to derogatory speeches and dissemination of stereotypes and prejudices against Islam and Muslims, and to orchestrated and deliberate mischievous media propaganda against Islam, Islamophobia has had a great impact in denigrating Islam and turning Muslims into monsters and savages in the psyche of the typical Western person and non-Muslim in non-Western countries. Beyond the mere negative reportage, of Islam and Muslims, Islamophobia in the Western media had gone to the extent of depicting, let us underline this, beyond the negative reportage of Islam and Muslims, Islamophobia in the Western media had gone to the extent, to the extent of depicting, depicting Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself as a violent person and as a terrorist through caricatures and cartoons as a terrorist purportedly in the name of freedom of speech or free speech. Whatever the motives of those cartoons and caricatures may be, with cruel disregard and denial of provocative potency and effect, a condemnation, derogatory derogation, and insult would follow when Muslims react. When Muslims react against that, then the condemnation will follow him. See the barbarians, see the, the, the violent people, see the, the criminals, see the savages, when Muslims react to that. Let's 
to be to be at the risk of being mistaken i be rushed at the risk of being mistaken you know what happened in in the case of uh, charlie hebdo cartoons isn't it and uh, the muslim reactions now the west hypocrit hypocritically and because of islamophobia would forget what happened and it's only the reaction of muslims would now be talked about and will be condemned as violent this and that at the risk of being mistaken of denying the existence of violent extremism that commits savagery in the name of islam reference must also be made to the conspiracy theory recourse to this theory that is conspiracy theory ordains a reverse reading it ordains a reverse reading and critical scrutiny and interpretation of incidents of violence in the Muslim world or purportedly perpetrated by Muslims. On the particular issue of the acts of violent extremism and terrorism committed in the name of Islam and purportedly by Muslims, rather than relying on the stuff usually given out and propagated by mainstream Western media, conspiracy theories suggest that we should search for the possibility of covert operations of violence and aggressions carried out by some hawks and sometimes in connivance with their protégés in the Muslim world to tarnish the image of Islam and Muslims and to create an excuse that would, unin that would justify an armada against Islam. While some people do dismiss this cheap and lame and intelligible defense of Islam and Muslims, the proponents and protagonists of this theory are largely and prominently Western writers and thinkers who have always come out with different, mostly opposite views and interpretation of incidents of violence. There are many names of writers that belong to this school of thought and the audacity of truth, the audacity of truth and the ostensible and ubiquitous availability and role of the social media have continued to make conspiracy theory not only thriving but also gaining a position of institutional credibility and only recently we have been told that the september 11 incident was a conspiracy theory and a lot of other things now we cannot therefore, when we, when we try to study the association of Islam and violence, we cannot dismiss studying conspiracy theory and the fact that covert operations have been taken in the name of Islamic activists or by Muslims, whatever that may be, in order to justify, you know, uh, action, military action against Muslims and Islam. Uh, it is a, a pity that although I've been hijacked to be the first speaker, I'm being praised for time. But let me just quickly, with the permission of, I believe, the chairman and the vice chancellor who are both my teachers and mentors, let me quickly present, uh, I, as I was saying, Dr. Bashir and uh, Pro Pro Professor Sila will come and present the Islamic perspective. But quickly, let me present some statistics. When we talk about Islam and violence, we need to read history in its entirety at sea. Across all the civilizations, which of the civilizations is most associated with violence? A, recent, a, a book that has been recently uh, uh, published by the Triple IT, War and, War and Peace in Islam, the, the misuse and abuse of jihad identified a number of statistics which are very important. Now, when we read all these statistics, we can see today Christianity has the Western media, it monopolizes the media. But then, ironically, throughout his human history, Christianity as a religion and Christianity as a civilization, and the West, that is the domain of Christendom, has the monopoly of violence throughout human history. Quickly. 
uh, Christian societies have been identified as the most bellicose because in almost known history, Christianity is responsible for 119 to 236 million killings of human beings in the world. Political violence perpetrated by Christian, Christian people or Christian civilization has been the highest. When you take all the death tolls, Christianity is responsible for 52.2%. What about genocides? Genocides, especially if you take Christianity in comparison with Islam, genocides, Christian one, Christian one was responsible for committing about 14, 14 out of 23 instances of genocide in recent history. And that is about 51.85% of genocide in recent history committed by Christian one. While the Islamic civilization, even if cases of genocide were found, so far, Islamic civilization and the Islamic world is responsible for only 2.5% of genocide in the world, in non-history. There is no time. I have to respect my leaders and stop at this point. I hope that uh, it will be given to the participants by email, by whatever means. Uh, he has written, we apologize that we had to cut it because we have three speakers, but alhamdulillah, the paper was well written, well presented. The next presentation is from our keynote speaker, Dr. Saeed Muhammad Babasilla, Director, Sahel University, Bamako in Mali. He will speak to us also, and then uh, Dr. Taufik will give us two minutes translation, inshallah. I would like uh, Dr. Fahid Fatal Mashkuran, Dr. Silla, Marhaba. Now, I will uh, just tell you a little bit about this gentleman. Uh, he is from the Islamic University of Medina, Kaman shi is Mala Bashir Aliyu, so she that Rijal Lemo de Solansu, so Shima Nanye Karatu. He is an expert in Tafsir and Sciences of the Holy Quran. And they were one and Cheke Nang, was in Tafsiri, the Kimia Al Quran. He is at present Secretary General, Union of African Muslim Scholars. What to Dikka Malama Africa, she is Secretary. Dick Malama Africa, Somala Bashir, Susan Show, Somala Baba Gida, Somala Ali Doda, Gabade, and Nadiki to the Secretary General of Sula Africa Gabada. So Najini President, National Conference of Malian Scholars, Shugabam Malama, Asar Mali Gabada. Sanam Kuma Sanakar Kashim, Supreme Islamic Council of Mali, Watu Kamar Achi Najiran, Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Shine Yanzu, Rector, Suachan, Vice Chancellor, Shine Rector, Na Sahel University in Bamako, Mali. A Sheikh, a Doctor, Dr. Saeed Muhammad Babasilla, Falit Fandar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yarda wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyil huda wa rahma Muhammad ibn abdillah 
wa alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'in lahum bi ihsan ila yawmid din amma ba'd Sa'adat Naib Hakim Wilayat Kano wa Farikihi Al-Mubajjal Ma'ali Mudiri Al-Jami'ah wa A'adahi Idarati As-Sada Mumathili Hukami Al-Wilayat Al-Mujabira والسادة مديري الجامعات الأئمة والقادة الإخوة والأخوات أحييكم جميعا بتحية الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ويسعدني أن أقف في هذا الجمع المبارك في هذه الجامعة في مدينة كانو العريقة وفي هذه المناسبة السعيدة لأبلغكم بداية تحيات إخوانكم في مالي حيث العلاقات بين مالي والشعب النيجيري ترجع في أعماق التاريخ عبر الحقب الذهبية المعروفة في منطقتنا في غرب إفريقيا فتحية الشعب إليكم جميعا في هذه المناسبة السادة الأفاضل أنا أشارك في هذا المؤتمر المهم بصفة رئيسا لجامعة الساحل عنف وقد اخترته لأسباب كثيرة فهذا المقام ليس للعبد الطويل بالنظر إلى عامل الوقت لكن عندما ننظر في هذا الموضوع القرآن الكريم وأنا اخترته بحكم علاقة وتخصص في هذا المجال فتخصص هو القرآن بعد أن من الله علي بحفظه وكذلك مدارسة في الجامعة الإسلامية بالمدينة المنورة ثم القرآن الكريم هو المنطلق لهذه الأمة والمرجع فالقرآن الكريم نحن نستطيع أن نرفعه في كل ساحة وله من خلال هذا الموضوع ونظر إلى ما فسر به وإلى ما وضعه القرآن الكريم من مبادئ راسخة فيما ينبغي أن يكون عليه وهو الرفق فهذا هو الذي قرره القرآن الكريم في مبادئ عديدة سنفصلها في تلك الجلسة فإنه يدعو إلى الرفق من خلال مواقف تفصل لكن يمكن ذكر نموذج لذلك نحن ندعو إلى ما نؤمن به ندعو العالم كله إلى الإيمان بالإسلام لكن من خلال ماذا؟ مبدأ الرفق ولنا معتمد في ذلك فيما أرشد إليه الباري سبحانه وتعالى وأنتم تعلمون ذلك في قصة موسى عليه السلام عندما أرسله إلى فرعون ومن هو فرعون في اعتدائه وظلمه قال فقولا له قولا لينا لعله يتذكر أو يخشى وكذلك ما ورد من صفات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لم فضوا من حولك فعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشابهم في الأمر وكذلك الآيات الأخرى بعد ذلك مع تطرق إلى تلك الآيات التي قد يتمسك به البعض إما جهلا أو عمدا من أجل أن يسم ديننا بأنه دين العنف أو كتابنا بأنه كتاب العنف وهذه كلها القرآن الكريم ما فيها من الآيات فسرها العلماء أحسن التفسير 
فيما يتعلق مثلا بالمعالجة الاستباقية للجريمة فالقرآن عندئذ وضع قواعد وأحكاما فيها من الشدة ما يلزم منه من الشدة من أجل المعالجة الاستباقية للجرائم فلا يمكن ترك المجرمين يعيثون فسادا دون أن يكون هناك رادع وبالتالي جاءت ما يتعلق آيات القصاص وآيات الحدود وغير ذلك وصولا إلى ما يتعلق بالمعاملة بالمثل إن اقتدى ذلك مع أن الإسلام يدعو إلى ما هو هي أحسن السيئة والمقابل الآخر الذي قد يكون مطلوبا وجزاء سيئة سيئة مثلها إذا أيها الأفاضل دون أن نطيل في هذه الجلسة الافتتاحية نقول إن معالجة القرآن لثقافة العنف أو مواجهة ثقافة العنف يعتمد على ترسيخ المبادئ المطلوبة للمسلم وهذا الذي ينبغي أن نرفعه أمام العالم أجمع بأن هذا هو دين الإسلام وأما ما يحرف من ذلك فنحن نقيمه بما أخذنا من أقوال العلماء وما استقر أيضا في تاريخ الأمة الإسلامية إذا هذا النقاط والأقوال لنتشاور ونتحاور مع إخوة لنا من الأكاديميين والباحثين حول هذا الموضوع المهم لا سيما في ظل التحديات التي نواجهها في منطقتنا في غرب إفريقيا بل يمكن أن نقول في معظم دول إفريقيا باعتبار أمينا لاتحاد علماء إفريقيا نعرف تلك التحديات في غرب إفريقيا في دول الساحل من الجماعات المنحرفة وكذلك في القرن الإفريقي وكذلك حتى في دول وسط إفريقيا وشرقها فبالتالي يكون من الضروري أن نعمل على معالجة هذه الأمور بكل ثقة وموضوعية ختاما التوجه للشكر إلى اللجنة المنظمة لهذا المؤتمر وتوجيه الدعوة إلي من مالي وما لقيته من الحفاوة والتكريم وما رأيته ما شاء الله من الحضور الكثيف بالنسبة لهذه الجلسة من القادة السياسية وكذلك العلمية والدينية في هذا البلد ولكم الشكر مني جميعا نيابة عن إخواني في مالي وكذلك حسن الاستماع ونسأل الله جل وعلا أن يمن على بلادنا بالأمن والتوفيق والاستقرار والرخاء وأن يرفع شأن هذا الدين ويجعل لمن يرفع شأنه وشكرا لكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <laughs> uh, quickly, uh, after praising Allah and uh, thanking the organizing committees, he discussed about, he mentioned that his specializations, area of specializations is in the same topic, that is the noble Quran against any form of violence. He defined the term Quran, which you all know, the great, the most generous, the most explanatory. Then he also defined the meaning of violence. After getting deep into the syntactical analysis of the word violence and wound, he later revealed that Quran has never ever mentioned the word violence in all its expressions. The word on violence has never been mentioned in Quran. In other words, Quran only mentioned the opposite of it, which is the linear. He even mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the two uh, messengers, uh, um, Prophet Musa and Aaron, he sent them to the most gracious king, the Pharaoh, the Egypt, 
he asked them to say Ula laku kaula layin. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described the Prophet by saying Fabima rahmatim min Allahi linta lahu. He also mentioned many uh, forms of how to preserve the violences among the Muslims community. Choosing the words and also good expressions, preservance of and the kindness, and also exploring virtues of the preservance, perseverance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. Part of the measures that he is or he has projected are taking a precaution mentioned the word of Quran which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah and he also the second one mentioned the protecting public against miscreants and munafiqun where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Jai al kufar wa munafiqina rublut alayhim this will instill fear to those who are miscreants or who are willing to bring the violence in the community also, he mentioned uh, other ways of uh, permissibility of giving equal treatment against any injustices uh, and forgiving those who are willing to stop punishing or bringing mayhem into the communities. Then he finally said, above, briefly, disregard all erroneous perceptions and of those mischievous, self-opinionated persons who consider Quran to be teaching violence. A man, he mentioned in some of his presentations, a man provoked Khalif Umar radiallahu anhu, which Umar radiallahu anhu has furiously became furiated and he wanted to actually punish the man. But one of the companions, spectators, tell him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khud al -afu wa amur bil Eventually, Khalif Umar stopped and he just thought and he couldn't say forward to or, or taking any retaliation against that man. Finally, uh, Dr. Sayyid Muhammad, he has done the organizing committee, especially the presence of the high power uh, delegations of the government. He is actually referring to the executive governor of Kanuset, represented by his deputy, and also the, uh, uh, the vice chancellor of the university, the uh, 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 former NUC uh, executive secretary, and the emirate councils of Kano, representing many high ranking officials and our chief emirates. Actually, he is very much amazed about the presence of those higher powered people and also the spectators, the governors who have come here. Then he finally gave a very wide dua, which all of us, inshallah, are going to benefit of it. Not only our countries, but even our continent, the West African continent, as is mentioned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Tawfiq, Brother Tawfiq, for this concise translation and interpretation of the keynote address. Final address from the second league paper, Dr. Bashir Ali Umar, the former director of this center, immediate past, as well as Imam Al Furqan, and uh, many other things besides. His citation is also very long, but I will save time by inviting him to come and speak to us on the topic. And inshallah, I know you will not exceed the minutes, inshallah, allocated. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Was salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin amma ba'ad. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, ably represented by, the, by His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Amanu Amin Abdul Salam, the Royal Fathers that are in, uh, in our presence with their, rep with their able representatives, the Chairman of the occasion, the Grand Imam of Kano, Professor Emeritus Muhammad Sani Zahreddin, the Special Guest of Honor, the immediate past executive secretary of the National Universities Commission, Professor Ahmad Adam Rashid, the chief host, the host, 
our vice chancellor professor sakir sagir adama abbas the lead, uh, lead paper presenters especially the guest speaker who has come all the way from uh, Mali, our brother and colleague uh, dr Mo uh, muhammad saeed babasila the director of the center for islamic civilization and interfaith dialogue uh, my brother and colleague, Dr. Muhammad Sani Umar Rijal Limo, OON, uh, distinguished professors and uh, academics and participants who have attended this occasion of the second international conference of CCID that is holding in this convocation square. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.